How does someone decide where to start their story? Wow, that's uh, how does where to start the story? Now, I'm assuming we have this little three or four or five minute story, right? A sure. Little, a little, I'm going to stay with us. You mean where to start that story? Well, if they're going to tell people their life, what if they don't want to say, well, it all, had, you know, I was raised in such and such a town. What if they want to start it from the, the time that they left college? Okay. Because they feel like that's when their real self began or something. Okay, we need, we need to talk about two things then. Now I understand more. We need to un talk about uh, sequencing. Okay, sequencing of information, which I can talk about, which has to do with um, the events in a story. And do you really want to start with the beginning of the story? Do you want to start with something in the middle? In other words, playing with the sequence, the chronology of events as you tell the story. So that's one thing. The, the other thing we can talk about when you say, tell the story of my life, there's another topic, and which I'm willing to forget what we're shooting now, but another topic which is about how an autobiographical story is put together, because it's put together differently than a screenplay. It's put together differently than a novel. It's put together differently than fiction. And how we, the process I use to explore what the story is really about through the writing, and don't make a determination at the beginning. So those are two types. Does that make sense? So sequencing and then... Sequencing and then structuring the autobiographical story. Okay. Which are two different things. The structuring is which story comes first in the sequence of stories and then there's the sequencing within a story. So is that something you would determine if someone presents you I'm, I'm sorry, I'm if not It presents me what? So, when you work with someone, how do they decide where to begin? Okay, let's talk about how to, where to begin with just one little story. If someone has told a story, and I'm, not, I'm just going to go back to your... The, you know, can we... I, my life is very that. dull. Yeah, I'm not really interested in talking about me. Sorry. Why don't we do a hypothetical... Uh, version of Karen, who's much more exciting. A hypothetical, that's <laughs> fiction. That's fiction. Let's okay, do something. Let me, okay. Karen, who's had an amazing, wild, incredible life. Okay, I'm going to tell you a, a quick story right now. One of my stories. And we'll use that, we'll use that as an example. Okay? okay. And I'll tell you, just, just give you an overview of the story. This is when I was uh, nine years old, about to become ten years old. And so I was about to have my 10th birthday. I have an older brother, an older sister, and I have younger siblings too. But my parents always made the 10th birthday a special birthday, special gift, extraordinary. So as I'm approaching, as I was approaching my 10th birthday, I was very excited about <clears throat> what's my gift going to be. I had seen what my older brother Peter got. It was great. At least he thought it was great, but it was great and it was very expensive. And I saw what my sister got. She thought it was great. They were very happy. And so I wanted something that was equally as great or actually better. I thought mine should be better. And so I was waiting for that moment. And then comes the morning of my birthday and I'm waking up. I can barely sleep. I'm waking up. I can't wait until the, we get to the, the time of the day when I'm going to open the presents and all of that. And my father was saying happy birthday, and I'm thinking, oh, it's a special gift. I think it might be, it could be a bike. I'm hoping it's gonna be a bike. Or I'm, uh, I was hoping that it could be maybe something like skates, ice skating, because I was into ice skating. And I also wanted maybe some new skis, something like that, bicycle, skate, skis. That would have been great. And I was just sitting there wondering what it's gonna be. And then the time came when we're opening the gifts, and the whole family is around, my older brother and sister and the younger ones are there. And when they were there, and when I opened the gift, I don't even know if you'll know what this is when I tell you. When I opened the gift, what was inside was a wooden press to keep a tennis racket from warping. Now I played tennis. I knew what this was. I had a tennis racket. In fact, a new tennis racket might have been nice. 
but why did I need a new press? Because there were wooden tennis rackets back then, and I was just devastated and disappointed. And my father seemed very pleased, and my mother seemed very pleased, but my brother seemed smug. Peter, right? Peter, yeah, and Faith seemed not terribly interested. So I didn't get what I wanted. Why do you think they gave you that? Because they, I don't know. Is it what it represented to you that you weren't? What my, yeah, I think what that story is really about, Karen, is um, as the third child in a family of six children, I really felt less than most of the other children, except maybe my youngest sister. But anyway, <clears throat> the last, the sixth one. And at that time, at 10 years old, I think what I really wanted to feel, wanted to feel is that I was as special, if not more special than my older brother and sister. And this 10th birthday gift would do it. And only once would you get to do this. And I know what they got. And I know, and then I saw what I got and it just didn't do it. So my expectation is that after I get the gift, my self-esteem would be super high. I would feel proud of myself, I would feel important, but I didn't. Okay, now, getting back to sequencing a story, right? The question is, with that story, where do you start? Now, the story, and you know this from filmmaking too, the story could start at the moment of opening the gift. Say, what would happen, I, this is what I'll, we'll do with students a lot of time, what would happen if you start with the opening of the gift? Well then, I said, yeah, but no, but you don't reveal what the gift is. You, you start at the moment of the opening of the gift, the moment when the adrenaline is so high and the anticipation is so huge and you start then, and then you go back to the, be, to the beginning and start that way. Well, what happens if you tell the story out of order? The important thing is that by the time the story is told completely, the audience has all the information that you're gonna give them, that's it. But it doesn't mean they need it in chronological order. In fact, it could start after the opening, after, as I'm walking back to my room, and I could start with the story talking about me walking back to my room with my gifts, devastated, destroyed, feeling despondent, feeling like I want to cry. It could start there. And now if you think about it, if you start there, the audience is going, what happened? What happened to you that it was so awful? And you're carrying birthday gifts and you want to cry? The audience has no frame of reference to make sense out of that which is great because it makes the audience curious. Then I can go back to the excitement about what I'm going to get. Now the audience knows the end and they're trying to figure, they're not trying to figure out where it's gonna go, but they're trying to figure, how did it get from this to that? I could even throw in the middle of it how much I love tennis. Throw in the middle of the story so that the tennis, the, the press for the tennis racket, the audience will think, well, that's great. But they realize it's not great because it's not greater than what Peter and Faith got. And where do I get that information in? So it's, it's, it's not, so that's, a, that's the sequencing. Where are you gonna start? Where do you wanna finish? That's the sequencing of a story. Now this is actually a lot of the, um, storytelling techniques that we teach in Write Your Life with autobiographical stories come from film, film editing. Now you've seen films that start in the middle. You've seen events that start there. You've seen flashbacks, you go, what is that? And all of that process, 